Hogan stayed, if I remember right, close to another three years, studying with this great man. Whenever he talked about Ju Ching in Japan, he always said, that old Buddha. Dogen has been criticized over time for being too critical of other monks. He was a tough cookie. But we know that the monk he was most critical of was himself. He believed that the Dharma was alive and active and practice should be practiced every second you're awake. Dogen believed that Buddhism was Zazen. And the doing of Zazen was the expression of Buddhism and the expression of your Buddha nature. Dogen has said that to sit in Zazen for five minutes is to be a Buddha for five minutes. Be careful on this, though. <laughs> he didn't say to sit daydreaming for five minutes. He said to truly do Zazen for five minutes is to be a Buddha. And simultaneously, Dogen taught that all activity should be Zazen. Zazen, that word, is, means sitting meditation. Okay? Dogen said every activity should be sitting meditation. And one of the, well, the first thing he wrote when he got back to Japan, and this tough guy, and he was a tough guy. There's no doubt he was a tough guy. The first thing he wrote was instructions for how to do meditation. And he went out and he taught two groups of people that Ace never taught. He taught laymen and he taught lay women. In Japan, you never taught women. Okay? And Dogen did. And he went back to the capital, even though his master told him not to, because he was from the wealthy. He was a blue blood. And so he had connections. And he started teaching these people. And he came under big time criticism. And eventually he moved away from the capital a little ways and, and, and set up a temple, in a, set up his teaching in a Tendai temple, and then eventually moved completely out of town, out in the middle of nowhere like Lucerne Valley. I mean, just way out in the middle of nowhere where there was nothing. There weren't much in the way of farms. In a canyon, on the side of a hill, and he set up a monastery. And if you want to study with him, it would probably in Japan take you to walk there two or three weeks just to get there so he could say no. And he continued to teach lay people. His first works were his instructions on how to do Zazen. There are five different versions that exist of that instruction, but they all basically say the same thing. But he wrote different versions as time went by, as he would remember things like, oh yeah, you shouldn't be too cold. So he'd put, don't be too cold in it. The second thing he wrote was his instructions to the cook at the monastery. And in his instructions to the cook at the monastery, Dogen expresses what Zen is to him every activity in your life. To him, after the abbot, the cook was the most important person. Because the abbot took care of the spiritual well-being of the monastery, the cook took care of the physical well-being. If the cook didn't do a good job, suffering followed. And the cook never had anything. He never had any money. Resources were always limited. So the cook had to treat everything as if it was precious. And Dogen recognized that. And this was all from his encounter with the cook. He had two encounters with the cook. The second encounter was the cook was out while he was staying at this great monastery where his master lived. This really old, wrinkled monk was out in the summer sun drying mushrooms for storage. And Dogen asked if he could help. Why didn't he go take a break? And he would do it. And the cook said, you're not me. Well, why aren't you having other people do this, as old and venerable as you are? They're not me. And so the cook taught him, the only person that can do the job right is yourself. If you want these mushrooms correctly dried. Well, to Dogen, that was the Dharma being taught. The only person that can practice the Dharma is yourself. The only person that can cook you is yourself. Nobody else can do it. But he always called his master with his last breath. He always referred to Ju Ching as that old Buddha. <laughs>